in there at a certain point, equities went down, Bitcoin just rallied, and then we kind of entered to the tail end of 2020, and um, it went 5x in a matter of a short few months. Is Bitcoin set for a massive rally? Is this a bear market? What should people expect for the rest of the year? Uh, well, it's at the start of the year, we've come out of a very, very soft December where um, we've got a lot of institutions selling down, taking their profits. Um, and that has caused the price to come down uh, substantially in a very weak kind of um, month where there's not a lot of liquidity in the market. Um, but overall, if you were to look at who holds the coins, they're held by relatively strong holders. Um, and it's very cyclical. You know, the coins move from people who are held it for a long time to a whole bunch of new people. And we're now in this kind of peak where the long-term holders have most of the coins. So usually they don't want to sell, right? They're not going to sell until, you know, there's some profit to be made. So, um, you know, in a typical structure like this, you kind of expect once the sort of consolidation that we're in, we've been sideways chopped for quite a long time. Once that sort of completes, um, we can expect um, price to go higher just because so many coins are held by the guys that are not selling um, until they realize profit. Uh, it's a pretty strong structure right now, even though um, the market's in, you know, short term fear because it's come down from, you know, uh, what is it, 69,000 to now like as low as 39,000. Um, but that for Bitcoin is, you know, the typical volatility. Um, long term in the macro sense of this market, uh, we're still in a bull rally, um, or a bull structure at least. Um, so yeah, um, it should be a good year. And did I quote you right as you thinking that, you know, we could still hit that $100,000 this year? I mean, maybe not Q1 or Q2, but it's still something that you see in your analysis. Uh, it's very, very um, possible. We, all we need to do is break the, you know, the kind of all-time highs around the high 60s. And then um, it moves, you know, because we've been consolidating around or below the high 60s for, well, it's been almost a good part of a year. So when you have that amount of time agreeing um, the price is solid around the, you know, uh, I think it's a $1 trillion valuation for this, this market. Um, it's, a, it's very healthy, right? It's like a lot of price discovery at the 50,000 plus range, which values Bitcoin at $1 trillion. So, um, you know, once, once that's agreed on for a long time, we break higher. Um, usually it does a step change up. We had that in, um, tail end of, um, 2020. Um, so you see Bitcoin does this, these sort of, um, huge rallies and then it sort of, waits around for a while to consolidate um, and so yeah I think um, once we break all-time highs this year after such a long consolidation you know going from 69,000 to 100,000 it's only like it's barely 50% gain that's nothing for Bitcoin. When you think about the market you've got um, many kind it's a menagerie of animals right you've got the long-term holders like maybe Michael Saylor, who's, is, who's stacking um, this coin for his company for the next 100 years, right? So every coin he buys, that kind of person is not going to sell. So you've got the hardcore long-term investors, the medium-term investors, and then you've got the short-term investors. And then you've got these different types of people, like people who are new and don't understand it, and others that are really um, solid in in their understanding and their investment in this this market. And so whenever the price rallies, you're going to have, like, for starters, the um, the guys that are new to it, they're going to go, oh, I've never seen profits like this. I'm taking profit and they sell. Um, and as the thing starts to sell um, down, like, people get scared and a lot of the newer guys um, will, like, get shaken out of the market. So every time we go downwards, we're testing the lows and we're – Effectively shaking out, um, you know, we call it weak hands, but basically the guys that um, get freaked out. And so um, at every price level, you've got to consolidate and make sure that people are holding this asset, uh, long term solid investors. And the guys that are going to sell on the earliest sort of profit or the earliest signs of loss, they have to be shaken out of the market.
Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. And so, you know, that's why you get these step changes. You go up, um, you shake out the traders, you shake out the um, short-term guys, the, the guys that are um, new to the market. And even they learn um, over a long kind of period of time being in the market that, you know, this kind of volatility within this emerging asset class is very normal. So um, you, you don't get up forever, right? You have to always test those highs with new lows, um, well, usually a, a high hello, hopefully. Um, and uh, yeah, so we need time for the, the market to settle on the price. And and furthermore, uh, you know, like underlying this, it's just more and more money is coming into the market. Um, and if you think of Bitcoin as like this bucket, right? It's a bucket that people still value in like equities or real estate, um, but it's a special one in that it's storing value online, you know, so it's internet programmable and it can be transmitted borderlessly. It's a kind of new asset class. And so everything like this where you're you're getting adoption and the internet has seen a huge adoption, right? Um, it's, it's created an adoption S-curve. Well, well, Bitcoin's the same, right? Well, we're doing an adoption S-curve. So um, it roughly doubles every um, year. Um, it has been doubling every year in terms of the number of people that are exposed to this asset. Um, and it's been doing that for like 13 years. So um, we're, we're in exponential growth, at least in the, the number of people holding it. Um, and so the price will go up. It's just a matter of time for the market to effectively value um, this adoption curve. Um, and that takes time, and the market's very irrational in the short term, so you get ups and downs. Um, and, um, you know, like, we can talk about how things are changing in the market, um, and yeah. so it's becoming a lot more complex, and you're starting to see a little bit more volatility than you would have normally expected just by the way the market works now. You can you can get to this, this analysis where, like, wow, this is really interesting. The price is... Like, for example, in um, 2019 to 2020, the price was chopping around sideways for $10,000, at $10,000 for a very long time. And meanwhile, coins were being scooped up off the exchanges and they were being piled into the hands of, um, you know, the, the hodlers. They, they were not selling. They were just buying and buying and buying. Turned out later that was MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor and his cohort and, and many other high net worth people were stacking this coin. Meanwhile, the discussion was, we've just had the COVID crash, Bitcoin's moving up and down with equities, um, gold was starting to look strong, and people were saying it was a failed, um, it was a failed safe haven. It's, um, you know, like, and meanwhile, the buying activity was there, it was absolutely there. And um, I wrote this article that said, look, this whole thing's going to decouple from um, equities because, um, you know, using one of the valuation metrics I was using, it was like a derivative of the MBT to, to provide effectively a price point of where the, the fundamental investors were valuing it. Um, you kind of have this valuation of where the fundamental investors would step in and buy and then almost a speculative premium that's chopping going all over the place so this speculative premium was chopping all over the place in correlation to the equities but that floor was coming up and up and up and i was like going, this is going to get squeezed out i'm going to get a squeeze and we're going to decouple completely and at a certain point equities went down bitcoin just rallied and then we kind of entered into the tail end of 2020 and um it went 5x in a matter of a short few months do you want to know one thing about crypto i made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. 
But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where do you invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.